Okie dokie. Today we're going to look at uh, thermonuclear fusion uh, inside the sun. Uh, basically uh, the power source uh, uh, mechanism that works inside the sun that lights up the sun and gives life to the, the earth uh, through its uh, energy. So let's get started um, uh, right away with that. And... Um, uh, I'm going to first describe something called a neutron decay. Um, and that's that the neutron, after about um, 10 to 12 minutes, uh, decays into a proton, uh, an electron, and an anti-electron neutrino. And um, the reason I describe this uh, equation is because when it comes to nuclear equations like this, we can move uh, particles around. Uh, this is the equal sign or the transition sign. Uh, sign. And uh, if we move particles on one side of the transition side or on the other, uh, all we have to do is take their antiparticle. So uh, if you uh, move the electron, uh, let's say we move the uh, electron over to this side and say, uh, what would we say? Something plus a neutron uh, gives us a proton and an anti-electron neutrino. When you move the electron over there, you would you would say it's the it becomes the positron plus a neutron uh, becomes a proton uh, plus an uh, electron neutrino anti-electron neutrino. I'm sorry, uh, anti-electron neutrino. Um, so if we bring particles on the move them on each. Uh, on another side from this equation, uh, we have to uh, denote that they are the antiparticles. So uh, we're going to start off with this reaction right here, where we have a proton plus an electron uh, gives us a neutron plus a neutron neutrino, not an anti-neutron uh, neutrino. And the reason that is, is because we've moved this particle on this side of the equation, so uh, we have to change it from an anti uh, electron neutrino to just a uh, electron neutrino, and that's what. We, and so we have an electron neutrino plus a neutron. An electron neutrino plus a neutron um, is basically equal to a proton plus an electron. Uh, the transition we'll make is that inside the sun, at the center of the sun, uh, with temperatures uh, uh, equal to about Eh, about 15 million degrees uh, Kelvin, um, we have reactions where uh, we have protons and electrons. And uh, and obviously, if one is positive and one is negative, uh, they'll tend to come together and not only come together, but even be put under such pressures that their distances will be um, uh, very close to a, a, ferm a Fermi meter or 1 times 10 to the minus uh, 15 meters. So... Uh, these two come together, and according to this equation, uh, they become a, a neutron uh, plus an electron neutrino, not an anti-electron neutrino, uh, plus uh, so whatever energy extra is uh, is uh, inside the uh, of the reaction here because of the temperature, of course, it provides quite a bit of energy for these two particles, uh, which uh, are not uh, necessarily... Uh, uh, transferred only to these two particles, but it will give you a, it will say a, a gamma ray, a, a light will come off this reaction. Okay. Okay. So this is the, the uh, first uh, reaction that happens in the sun. What we'll do now is, uh, well, now that we have neutrons inside the uh, center or the core of the sun, uh, there's also protons and electrons inside there. Um, so we'll take that neutron that was created in this reaction and add another proton uh, that's uh, that there are plenty of in the core of the sun. And so a neutron plus a, po uh, a proton uh, will give you a deuteron. Uh, it's ionized uh, two hydrogens uh, with no electrons, of course, because they'd be stripped away by uh, all the energy and particles bouncing around inside the core of the sun. Uh, plus some energy, whatever these two... Uh, uh, particles may carry extra energy, which uh, would be above and beyond uh, the creating this mass of uh, the deuteron, which is a hydrogen, uh, basically two, uh, uh, I'm sorry, one neutron and one uh, proton uh, uh, put together. Okay. Um, well, we'll take that deuteron and put them right here. 
and will make him react with another proton that happens to be bouncing around inside the core of the sun. So we have a proton plus the deuteron from this reaction, and that will create a um, helium nucleus uh, with um, two protons and one neutron. That's why we write a three here. A helium, of course, has two protons. Hydrogen only has one proton. And then if there's a, uh, if there's an extra uh, number here, like a two, uh, hydrogen with a one proton has to have also, uh, this deuteron has to have a one proton, uh, plus one neutron gives us the two. Here, helium is two protons, uh, plus one neutron gives us a mass, uh, uh, a mass of about three, uh, AMUs. And so, uh, proton plus a deuteron will form a helium, uh, uh, isotope. Uh, helium-3, uh, plus some extra energy, or light, or whatever you will have, um, that uh, is provided by uh, above and beyond by these two particles to create this mass. Okay? Now, while all of this is going on, of course, the same reactions are happening uh, somewhere uh, near near uh, near these reactions. There's millions and millions of these reactions going on. So I simply repeated the uh, each of these things just to show you that there's there's another reaction that's going on right next door to this reaction. And the reason that's important to have these two reactions is because uh, we're going to take this helium new uh, helium th uh, three isotope and this helium and the and the one uh, this created helium-3 isotope, and this created helium-3 isotope that's created in the core of the sun, and we're going to fuse them together, and um, uh, so helium-3 plus helium-3 uh, will give you a helium-4, which is two protons and two neutrons, a very stable uh, uh, isotope of helium, uh, plus a proton and a proton will be ejected uh, from uh, uh, from this the fusion of these two uh, uh, particles right here. Um, so if we look at this uh, whole reaction, what we see is that we're 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 what's going into the reaction is one, two, three, four, five, six protons are going into the reaction. Uh, the sun is having to donate six protons, um, and at two. Protons are coming out of the end reaction, so 6 minus 2 means that this reaction here uh, to create a helium-4 nu uh, nucleus and a uh, proton and a proton uh, will cost the sun uh, 4 protons. 6 go in, 2 come out, so 4 have disappeared, uh, 4 protons have disappeared. Uh, on top of that, it also costs the sun these two electrons that are uh, here and here, of course. So it'll cost the sun two electrons and f uh, four protons. And so when we calculate how much energy is uh, outputted by this, uh, these uh, steps here, um, we'll we'll just look at the uh, the inputs. Uh, the inputs are four protons and two electrons, and we'll look at the output. A, a total input is this: the four protons and two electrons. And the total output is the helium, uh, helium four nucleus that was created here, plus whatever energy is created, which will swing over to the other side. So if we take the mass of this helium nucleus, um, and subtract off the masses of the particles that went into the reaction, namely four protons and two electrons, uh, helium is, uh, 4.00260 uh, AMUs, and proton is a uh, 1.00727 AMUs, and here's four times that because you have four protons, and then here we're going to have the uh, uh, electrons are 0.00054859. Uh, uh, right here. Um, so if we take the helium that was produced and uh, subtract off the input of the protons, the four protons and the input uh, mass that the the sun uh, donated of two electrons. Um, and then we multiply those AMUs by 931.5 MeV per AMU. Uh, we'll get about 25.7 uh, MeV. So this is the energy that is released uh, in this uh, reaction on top of the fact that uh, the reaction produced uh, helium uh, from protons. 
So protons, uh, four protons and, uh, uh, two electrons, uh, created one helium nucleus and 25.7, uh, mega electron volts of energy, which were released in all these, uh, light, uh, photons of gamma rays right here. And, uh, to a little certain degree, the two, um, the two electron neutrinos that were produced, uh, right here and here. Okay. So this is the primary, uh, uh, what's called the proton-proton cycle, uh, within stars about the mass of our, uh, sun. Um, if we look at, um, if we look at, um, uh, after, uh, uh, you burn up enough, uh, uh, protons or hydrogen inside a star, uh, you'll be left with quite a bit of helium, a helium core, and that the, 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 the pressures inside the star will get greater and greater, and you'll have higher and higher temperatures, which will then start burning here. We're burning protons to create helium. Well, we can actually start burning helium. Once we have enough helium and the pressures and temperatures get great enough inside the core of our sun later on in its life, not now, uh, it'll be doing what, what it's doing now for about probably another uh, three, four, five billion years. Um, but uh, after all the but the hydrogen is burnt inside and converted into helium, um, the temperatures will go up and the, the helium will, um, uh, the helium will fuse together, uh, in this manner right here. Uh, so three heliums will come together and create carbon, uh, which is necessary, of course, for life. Uh, carbon plus some energy, uh, here. So here we have three helium nucleuses that are fused, uh, through fuse, by fusing them together through the hot temperatures, uh, and, um, high probabilities that they will, uh, interact, uh, will create, um, three helium nuclei, uh, will, uh, helium four nuclei will create a carbon, uh, carbon 12, uh, plus some gamma photon. And, uh, the energy, uh, given off by this reaction is about 7.3 MeV, uh, there. Okay. Um, in, uh, as the temperatures get hotter and hotter in, in, uh, more massive stars, uh, we can have, uh, or when we have quite a bit of carbon around, um, we can have carbon, uh, uh, and helium, uh, fused together, carbon 12 and, uh, helium 4, uh, fused together inside the core of stars, uh, to produce finally oxygen, uh, which is nice to have on Earth to breathe. Um, Plus, uh, some, some energy coming out of there. And the, the, uh, energy released in this, uh, uh, reaction is about 7.2, uh, mega electron volts. And that happens in heavy stars and, uh, and in stars, uh, 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 where, um, these, uh, uh, these components are quite prevalent inside the cores of the stars. Okay. Um, let's see, let, let's skip this carbon nitrogen cycle just for a second. And, um, look at some other things that the heavier elements that we can create. Um, two carbons inside a core of a star, uh, can then start being burnt. Uh, so we have helium burning and then carbon and helium burning to, uh, helium burning to create carbon 12, then carbon 12 burning with helium to produce oxygen. And um, we can also get now carbon and carbon burning, or a carbon burning star. This takes quite a bit of mass of stars and quite a bit of temperatures to get these uh, two nuclei together because of, the, of course, the positive proton charges uh, inside uh, uh, repel each other. But if you can get temperatures high enough, uh, these two uh, carbon uh, nuclei inside a star, a heavy star, uh, can create uh, your magnesium-24. Uh, there, so a higher uh, element there, which uh, is necessary for our um, uh, uh, our uh, uh, life. Also, we have magnesium uh, that we are as necessary component of human biological living. Um, we can also get two carbons uh, to fuse together, two carbon twelves to fuse together uh, inside a cores of the star of heavy uh, massive stars uh, to produce a neon. Uh, plus, uh, another helium nucleus. So now we're producing a neon, um, a nuclei, uh, within stars. So we can see that we are producing heavier and heavier elements. How far does this go? Well, the heaviest element, of course, we can produce is iron. And that's because, uh, iron is the most stable, um, 
uh, uh, nuclei that can be created, uh, nuclei before iron, uh, uh, have less binding energy than nuclei, uh, after iron. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, binding, uh, energy, um, per nucleon goes like this, and, and, and iron is right there. So if the sun creates, um, uh, uh, things below it, uh, or above it, I'm sorry, if they, if they create, uh, things be above, uh, nuclei, uh, more massive than iron, uh, then those nuclei have less binding energy, and so the energies inside will tend to break those, uh, break those, um, uh, nuclei apart into smaller pieces. Uh, so iron is the, is the strongest element that can be, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the most massive element that can be stable within inside the core of a, a star. Uh, let's take a look, just a quick look here. I know this lecture is getting a little bit long. Uh, it's, it's something called the carbon nitrogen cycle. I just want to just include this, uh, for posterity. Um, so what you have is you start off with some carbon plus a proton. Uh, we'll give you a nitrogen isotope of nitrogen 13 uh, plus some uh, light uh, coming off of there. So that's nice. Uh, yeah, the star is producing some light still in this uh, carbon nitrogen cycle. Um, then this nitrogen will fission or decay uh, into carbon 13 plus a positron uh, plus an anti- uh, electron neutrino, uh, that'll be fission, that will not be fusion. Fusion is when two nuclei come together. Uh, fission is when one nuclei, uh, breaks up into p uh, parts. Um, uh, then what we're gonna have is, uh, we'll take this, um, uh, just like we took the nitrogen 13 and it did this, uh, we'll take this carbon, uh, 13, uh, add a proton, fuse a proton to, to it inside the core of a star. A hot star and uh, create nitrogen 14 uh, plus uh, some light ray and that will be a fusion reactor because we put two nuclei together here's another fusion reactor a fusion reaction which is um, a ni this nitrogen 14 plus another uh, proton which there are plenty of inside stars. Uh, nitrogen 14 plus a proton will produce uh, an isotope of oxygen, not oxygen 16 like we had here, but oxygen 15, uh, which is eight protons and seven, uh, only and seven neutrons. This is eight, uh, protons and eight, uh, neutrons gives you 16, uh, plus some light coming off. So that's nice. Some light is being produced by the star still. That'll be a fusion reactor. And then we'll have another fission where one nuclei will become uh, multiple, uh, have multiple parts, uh, become uh, fission into multiple parts. So this oxygen 15 right here, uh, will be, uh, will become nitrogen 15 plus a positron, uh, plus an anti, I'm uh, sorry, an electron neutrino that will decay or fission. And then we'll have, um, uh, this nitrogen 15 plus another proton. That's not potassium. Uh, that's a proton. Um, a nitrogen 15 plus a proton will give you a carbon 12 plus a helium nuclei. Um, and so we'll start basically the cycle back again and use this carbon 12, uh, to here to add a proton. And, and this goes around and round. And what it does is it produces these, uh, the end products are these, uh, uh, these helium four nuclei that are pumped into the, uh, the core of the, the star. And this, of course, is a fusion reaction also. Okay. Well, I wanted to say something about, um, the fact that my title, uh, here said, uh, thermonuclear fusion inside the sun. And then it said new. Uh, and I didn't point that out before. I wanted to point it out at the end. And I'll just take a few seconds to talk about this. Uh, the reason I call it new is because, um, this reaction right here, uh, these two reactions are, um, if you look on Google and, and look up the proton proton cycle, uh, for the sun or stars, um, you'll find out that these two are lumped together in one reaction, which I'm about to show you right here. Now remember, I'm asking you to believe that a proton, a positive charged particle, plus a negatively charged particle will come together or fuse together, uh, very readily inside a star. I don't think that's totally an outlandish, uh, thought. 
Uh, but out there right now in the proton-proton cycle, I know what the proton-proton cycle was, and I read about it, but I just found something a little bit funny about it, and that is that here we're, we're, we, we have hydrogen-1, uh, it's actually the proton, that's a positive and a positive because electrons can't orbit uh, protons inside the center of a star, it's too hot, they get ionized immediately. So here we have two positively, uh, um, two positive uh, uh, nuclei coming together. According to the standard literature out here, they're on thermonuclear fusion in stellar uh, astrophysics. I really haven't seen anybody um, out there uh, proposing what I've proposed here, that this is the initial reaction, that the proton plus an electron will form a neutron, and then the neutron, the proton, will f will form the deuteron. Uh, out there, what it, what there is, is there there is that a proton plus a proton will immediately cause the the deuteron plus a, a positron plus an electron neutrino. So uh, this reaction I've broken up into two more plausible reactions. Uh, rather than a proton plus a proton uh, uh, creating a deuteron right away, in other words, creating that neutron that the deuteron needs. A deuteron is one neutron plus one and, and one proton. That's what a deuteron is. Um, I don't. There's a couple of reasons that I I believe my theory is a is more uh, more uh, believable, and that is because first of all, you're trying to get a proton, a positive plus a positive charge together, and saying that will be easier to do, or it will occur more often than getting a positive and a negative together. I don't think any physicist would uh, would believe that. I don't know why. Uh, this has been proposed. The other thing is, is that this reaction of two protons becoming three particles uh, is a more complex reaction. Uh, if you have the more particles you have, uh, the more complex uh, the situation is, because technically these particles, these, these <clears throat> Reactions have to happen both ways, in a sense. Uh, in other words, this plus this plus this also has to give you two protons if the if the movie is run backwards. It's called a uh, time invariance um, in particle physics. And so, what, what I have here, yes, I have a third uh, a third particle also. But my third particle is simply light energy, which is a lot simpler than a uh, three uh, particles with uh, perhaps mass. Right now, we don't even know. If uh, some papers say that neutrinos have mass, some say they don't have mass. There's no conclusive evidence right now for whether neutrinos have uh, have mass or not. But these are three massive objects, and that's a lot more uh, a complex uh, thing uh, reaction than um, uh, two uh, massive, supposedly massive objects. If we if we assume the neutrino has mass then that's fine, and then I have two with mass and one massless uh, uh, ob uh, particle right here. So this reaction is simpler, and I would assume every physicist would say, yes, I think a, a positive particle uh, plus a negative particle will happen a lot more readily uh, than uh, two positive particles coming together. Well, I'm sorry, I ran that about 20, almost 24 minutes. Uh, so I hope you're still awake or still here. And I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I look forward to any comments you have at the bottom of the page. Thank you very much.